All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the uh, Hall effect. Now, the Hall effect um, is uh, based on kind of the interaction of uh, magnetic fields. And uh, we use the Hall effect in probes uh, to basically observe magnetic fields, okay, or detect magnetic fields. It's used for detecting magnetic fields. And actually the relative strength of those magnetic fields as well, and, and gives us an output about how strong that field is. Um, which has many, many uses, and we'll talk about maybe some of the uses of this actually in lesson. So uh, let, let's get straight to it. So say for example, let's have a look how a sensor is actually uh, made up. So we start out with a circuit. And within that circuit, there is a, uh, a conductor, but that conductor, um, obviously, we've got our electrons flowing from uh, negative to positive. They're going to be flowing across in that direction. Uh, now, obviously, try not to confuse this with uh, any conventional current, so just make sure that we're aware. So, the current, so if we have our electrons here, um, they would be flowing in this direction. Whereas that would leave us with current flowing in the opposite direction, which is this direction here. So current would flow in that direction. Um, as a result of this, we can actually say that uh, we, um, we can observe if we put a magnetic field into this, then we can, I'll just draw the magnetic field in. So say, for example, we have a magnetic field going down into this conductor right here. And uh, what then happens is, is that we would expect those for the, there to be a force on these electrons as they move across this gap. And the nature of that is, is it causes the electrons to deviate kind of in a, a path like this. So, and so as a result, this kind of curved path leads to an overall negative charge buildup on this side. Which, if we built up a negative charge on this side, then retrospectively, this side, or the other side, would be positive. Okay? So the other side would be positive. So this would be a positive side. And so what you've set up now is an electric field. Um, and the potential difference can be measured between those two uh, side. Uh, faces of this um, conductor. And so as a result of that, we can then draw in um, different color, I'll use green. We can then use a voltmeter to actually physically measure the potential difference between those two points. And then use that voltage to actually allow us to, um, to measure what uh, uh, a relative strength of the of the voltage that's created, the Hall voltage, we'll call this, and um, then we can use that to indicate the strength of the magnetic field. So a really really cool kind of uh, use of magnetic fields um, to create an electric field either side to allow that to happen. So. Um, so there is an equation that allows this to all come together and it's, it's born out of multiple kind of equations. So you've got to remember that the force felt here comes out of the fact that of this equation, uh, which the force felt on a, ch a charge carrier in a, in a magnetic field. And also one you may know from AS, which is the uh, electron drift velocity equation. Um, this one here. Now I'm not going to derive that here, there's lots of videos on YouTube deriving that um, and you can look in your book as well for a derivation. We're just getting straight to it, we're going to have, let's have a look at what this actual equation is. So the whole voltage is calculated as uh, B times I over uh, NTQ. Now let's just define what some of these terms are, okay? Um, so obviously B is the magnetic flux density, we should know that hopefully by now. Then we have the current as well, so this is the current. Then we have NTQ, now Q is the nice easy one, that's the charge, okay, that's the charge. So let's write down some of those ones that we've identified there so that we can kind of make a note on them. So um, let's do here, so we've got current, we've got flux, density. And down here we've got the charge. 
And then across here we've got two other terms. Now this n actually comes from the n in this equation here, which is the uh, electron density, okay, or the number density of electrons. So um, number density. And you may or may not remember that the number density of electrons um, is a fixed intrinsic value for whatever piece or conductor that you're using. So uh, usually it's quoted and given to you in any calculations you might do. Now T is unique because T is found by looking at the actual conductor more three-dimensionally. So if we were to draw the conductor a bit more three-dimensionally now, so I'm just going to draw with a pen that works. Okay? So we have our conductor that uh, three-dimensionally, and uh, obviously we observed the electrons, you know, going following this path across uh, from one side to the other, and this is obviously our negative side, and this is our positive side. So this is me just kind of redrawing it and trying to draw it a bit more three-dimensionally. Um, so what is the value T? Well, T is the thickness of this conductor. It's this value right here. Okay, it's the thickness of the conductor in uh, that is actually allowing those electrons to pass through that's measuring the magnetic field. So the thickness um, is the thickness of this conductor. So the thickness. And that's um, pretty much it. I mean, we just need to kind of look at, obviously, the utilization of the Hall effect, how it can be used to detect magnetic, magnetic fields, uh, certain situations. But other than that, most of the questions you're going to get is from looking and applying this equation and making sure you put numbers in. So uh, not generally too difficult, but you do hopefully understand that how the Hall effect is created by the deviation of electrons as a result of the uh, magnetic field that is acting in there. And that potential difference then leads to the Hall voltage, which is measured here. So uh, yeah, really cool effect, really useful. And uh, we'll have some questions for you in class that we can have a look and, and uh, practice it. Till next time.